Welcome to this week's Steam Culture. And we're going to talk about an American icon this week, the Steamship. Now, many famous steamships in movies and historical events. Now, steamships became sort of popular and mainstream in the late 1700s with the invention of the paddle wheel, which as you can see from these images, very familiar, very iconic. In fact, we have one of the oldest paddle wheel steamboats in the United States right here in Louisville called the Bell of Louisville. Now, and those were used mainly um, inland, lakes, canals, rivers, things like that to transport people and supplies. So uh, as history progressed, we moved on to basically now we have a steamship. Now, a steamship it differs because we're out on the open ocean and we have a large ship powered by a steam paddle wheel. The biggest progression after that became when we used the propeller, which interestingly was invented by James Watt, who you may remember was one of the early inventors of the steam engine. And we're going to be talking about some paddle wheel steamboats today. Now the most famous paddle wheel steamboat, as you might uh, have seen already, is the showboat. Now showboats were large vessels that roamed up and down the great rivers uh, here in America, and they had uh, like art galleries, ballrooms, saloons, dance halls, just these great entertainment vessels. And they would, you know, like I said, move up and down the river and come into port and pick up uh, folks. But there's two that you may not know about. One is called a pack boat and the other is called a snag boat. Now these pack boats um, were huge commerce moving vehicles. So same thing, they were what's called an aft uh, propelled paddle wheel, which means the paddle was on the, right in the back, right in the center of the boat. And they moved uh, goods, as you can see in these pictures, huge amounts of cotton, but also people from port to port and really made commerce happen through the waterways. The second is called a snag boat. Now these were invented out of necessity. You'll see on the front there's a large crane and some other equipment. Uh, sunken trees, sunken boats, other things in the waterways were damaging the hulls of, uh, of paddle boats or sinking them. So these guys kept the uh, waterways clear. So as you can see, showboats uh, were for show and snag and pack boats were for doing the work. So showboats were designed to be outrageous, over the top, and attention getting, which is why when someone acts like that these days, we call them showboaters. Now maybe you know someone like that. I can't think of anyone like that in my life. Now we're going to move out of the rivers and the canals with the paddle wheels onto the wide open ocean. So, the first steamship credited with going transatlantic was the SS Savannah. Now the SS Savannah did have a paddle wheel mounted on the side, so it was called a side wheeler. Also had a steam engine and a boiler located right in there. Now as you can see from this picture, some unique design features. One, the paddle wheel actually came up out of the water because the Savannah would use the boiler and the, and the paddle wheel and the steam engine to get out to sea, then she would go under sail. So what happens is, the paddle wheel in the water creates a lot of drag that the sails had to overcome. So they would hoist it out of the water, mount it on the side. You also see that the stack for the boilers had to be turned sideways so that it didn't send hot ash and all that stuff into the uh, sails. All right, so the next big jump from there was a long distance commercial steamship. Now really before 1866, there weren't any steamships that would make that long trade route from, um, from the United States or Britain to the Far East where there was a lot of tea and things that had to be moved in commerce because no ship could carry that much coal and cargo. Um, so there was a big problem. Now another problem was this, that they didn't have the fuel efficiency to make the trip. Well, what do I mean by that? The British Board of Trade, I have that right, the British Board of Trade said, hey look, if you're on a ship, you can't operate a boiler above 25 psi, where most land boilers were operating around 60 or 70 or 80 psi. So, gentleman by the name of Albert Holt, you see a picture of him here, he invented a compound steam engine. All right, so Holt's compound steam engine could produce 300 horsepower, but here's where the magic come in. See, they needed fuel efficiency. So, in order to do that, he convinced the British Board of Trade to allow him to operate at 60 psi, which is three times what they were operating at. More steam power, more energy per pound of coal used. So now they could travel 8,500 miles before having to reload on coal, which really opened up that shipping route. So that was groundbreaking. 
So just like everything else, like a plane and an automobile, they went from practicality to luxury. So from large commercial steamships, we ended up with these steam-bound ocean liners. Running water, electricity allowed for first-class cabins, ballrooms, uh, shows, all the kinds of things that you can see here in these pictures. One of the most iconic, if not the most iconic steamship ever, the Titanic. Now, the Titanic was famous for sinking in April 15th of 1912, but there's a whole lot more to the story. And I wanna share with you a little bit about what went on below deck, specifically in the boiler room. So let's dig in. Now, there was 29 boilers on the Titanic. 24 of them were for the ship's propulsion, and five of them were to generate electricity for the ship. Now, the boilers for propulsion were double-ended Scotch Marine boilers, which means that the fuel, the coal, was uh, fed into it from both sides. So those were segmented into six different boiler rooms along the ship. The single-ended boilers were for generating power. So in other words, they had furnaces only on one end of the boiler. Now, interesting that they were located below the water line in the belly of the ship, separated, uh, the boiler rooms were separated by these large coal hoppers, and they had to be separated because the fuel was fed into both ends of the boiler. So it was like boiler, coal hopper, boiler, coal hopper. So tons of coal loaded onto this ship, and off they go with a group of men called the Black Gang, who were in the belly of the ship, faces black covered with soot, which is where they got their name, and they fed those boilers day and night because it took about 12 hours from the time you put the first shovel of coal in them and lit them to get up to steaming pressure, which was 215 PSI. Now the boilers were, it's like 145,000 square feet of heating surface in total, generated about 260 pounds of steam per minute. So these things could put out the power and they needed it to turn these huge 24 foot diameter propellers that were at the rear of the ship. But let's talk about what happens now that we're we're lit coal, you've got to get rid of all that exhaust. So, interesting system. Individual um, breaching coming off of each boiler looks kind of like a spider legs come up to this common stack which goes out the ship. Now, you see in these pictures of the Titanic, there's four funnels, as they were called in the day. We would call them a smokestack, but they were called a funnel. Now, Titanic trivia, the aft-mounted funnel actually isn't a funnel for the boiler room. See, now why would they have four? Well, well, in the day, the Power Ocean Liner, this was the deal, and a big competition for this business. Well, the biggies of the day had four uh, funnels. The Titanic didn't need four, but they weren't about to build one with three because that would look like it had less power, which means less prestige. So they built it with four for balance and some aesthetics. But they went ahead and made it useful, so they created some separate venting for the rest of the ship. They also put a ladder on the inside so shipmates could climb up if they needed to see out because they weren't allowed um, you know, on the regular decking with the rest of the passengers. So some interesting trivia about that and, and pretty clever. 